Hello friends, this is Growl. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to heal in Mythic Plus with Resto Shaman in Shadowlands Patch 9.2. Resto Shaman has been a solid healer in dungeons for the entire expansion, and I think patch 9.2 will be no exception. It's great at all levels of skill, bringing really high amounts of damage into those really tough keys, while still having nice utility and big heals to make it solid for pugs and group finder. Although Shaman is a pretty well-rounded healer, it can feel a bit immobile at times. Not having great movement skills outside of Spirit Wolf, and having to hard cast your big healing abilities can make you feel glued to the floor at times. This is why my favorite race for Shaman is Goblin for Horde, or I guess Dwarf for Alliance. Goblin Jump gives you that added mobility, while Dwarf simply gives you a way to remove debuffs from yourself alongside a little bit of extra crit damage. For stats in Mythic Plus, I would prioritize Verse, then Haste, and then Crit. You do want enough haste to be able to dish out spells quickly, but if you stack it too heavily, you're going to run out of mana. Generally speaking, haste adds to your single target damage, and crit mostly benefits to your AoE. Versatility is more of an in-between stat while also giving you some tankiness. I'd recommend at least around 25% haste, then pile most of your stats into verse, and then whatever left over into crit. Mastery is a great stat for healing in emergencies, however, it doesn't contribute at all to your damage. If you're just gearing up or simply don't care about your damage as much, it's fine to equip high mastery pieces that are good item level. As you do try to maximize your damage though, you will want to get rid of as much mastery as possible. I definitely want to stress that you're mainly just aiming for high item level pieces as you're gearing up. You should only really worry about your stat priority when it comes to your jewelry and then when you're close to getting max item level. As for trinkets, the main goal is just to get big stat procs and bonuses that help your healing and damage. The two best stat trinkets right now are Unbound Changeling and Solea's Secret Technique. You can farm both of these from Mythic Plus and upgrade them with Valor. If you're looking for a little more damage, you could try the Resonant Reservoir from Desegni in Sepulchre or the Divisible Ooze from Plaguefall. These will both boost your damage, but the cost is that it doesn't really benefit your healing abilities at all. For your legendary powers, you have a lot of options. All of Shaman's legendaries are pretty one-dimensional, so none are going to feel universally useful. In high keys, you're mostly going to see Deep Tremor just for that added damage. If you're looking for a bit more healing, you could try something like Jonats or Manatide Totem. I also think that Chains of Devastation could be a fun option, but that's definitely going to require the 4-piece tier bonus to make good use of, and it might not be as useful on bosses, so it's not something I would generally use on a Tyrannical Week. I made Deep Tremor on Boots with Haste and Versatility, but like I mentioned, you have lots of options with both stats and legendaries, so I wouldn't stress too much about it. Right now, the go-to covenant for Shaman and Dungeons is Kyrian. Kyrian Vesper Totem gives you incredible burst damage on 1-6 to six targets on a very short cooldown. It ends up being over a third of your damage overall. It also splashes quite a bit of healing around, which is great for keeping your tanks healthy and also juicing up your cloud burst when you need to do AoE healing. If you're looking for a more healing focused option, I think honestly all three other covenants are good. Night Fae, Venthyr, and Necrolorn all give you a pretty strong group healing button on a fairly short cooldown. Just know that if you go one of those routes though, your damage is going to be quite a bit less. For the purposes of this guide, I'm only going to go through my Kyrian setup, but just know there's a lot of different ways to play it. The Soulbind tree I would use is Mechanicos. This tree gives you some free damage from a few of the nodes, as well as a big cooldown reduction on your Vesper if used near multiple enemies. Keep in mind this CDR triggers right where you place the Vesper, so you may end up wanting to drop it in a big cluster of mobs first and then reposition it later where you want it. The potency conduits I use are Swirling Currents and Elijah Dirge. Swirling Currents is an amazing conduit that buffs your single target healing, and the Vesper conduit adds extremely valuable single target damage. I decided to give up my third potency for Hammer of Genesis, mainly because none of the other potency conduits for Shaman are that strong. You can select all the Endurance conduits except for Astral Protection, since, let's be honest, you're one of my YouTube subscribers and I know you're not going to be dying very often. I like Totemic Surge as a finesse conduit, just for a little bit of extra CDR on totems to give you a little bit more mob control. And lastly for setup, I'll mention Talents. In the first row, I'm taking Undulation for the added single target healing, since you'll be pressing Healing Surge a whole lot in a dungeon. Echo of Elements is mandatory in the second row for more Cloud Bursts and Lava Bursts. In the 
third row, you can take whatever suits you based off of the dungeon, your team, and the affixes. I wouldn't worry about it too much. In the fourth row, I'm taking Ancestral Vigor to give some extra HP to teammates that are in danger. Some people like Earthen Wall. However, I feel like Shaman already has really great stacked group healing, so you don't really need more of that. I prefer taking Graceful Spirit in the level 40 row, but the other options are fine, assuming that you can make good use of them. Cloudburst Totem in the next row is a must take, as well as Ascendance. These two talents gives you insanely powerful party healing while you're simply just pressing your healing surge and your riptide. But what good are talents without a solid rotation as well? Well, the shaman rotation is pretty simple. Your two main heals are riptide and healing surge. Riptide is mana efficient and you can cast it while you're moving. Healing surge should be used when you need a bit more juice. If you need to be doing healing, you should almost always have a cloudburst totem active as well. Cloudburst gives you stacks of swirling currents and also stores healing to help top the party later. You don't need to worry about Cloudburst too much. A lot of people ask questions about how you should use it. Honestly, while you're learning, just keep it rolling if you need to be doing healing. It's really that simple. As you get more experience with Shaman healing, you can start to worry about aiming for specific timings, but honestly, it's not that important. The two-piece bonus of your tier set builds stacks, which eventually gives you a guaranteed crit on your chain heal. You can spend these stacks from time to time, but you shouldn't be using chain heal much without these stacks. Simply because your single target heals are so efficient, chain heal doesn't really beat them out. If you're worried about mana, you can start using Healing Wave instead of Healing Surge, but it tends to be such a long cast that allies will often either panic and use things that they don't need to, or just die during the cast. You also want to be maintaining your earth shield on the tank as often as possible. If you have specific party members in danger, feel free to move it to them temporarily, but for the most part, your earth shield should sit on the tank. You'll notice a lack of healing rain and chain heal mentioned here. Healing rain and chain heal generally aren't super effective spells in dungeons. They're mainly used for raid healing, although historically they've been pretty iconic parts of the Shaman Toolkit, most of the time you'll just be better suited spamming your single target heals with Cloudburst active for the AoE healing. I will use Healing Rain occasionally when I know my entire party will be stacked nearby for the whole duration, usually on a boss or like a mini boss where there isn't too much to dodge. As for DPS, you want to be using your Vesper Totem on cooldown and making sure you're spending all of the charges. On single target, you maintain Flame Shock while spamming Lava Burst and Lightning Bolt. On two targets, you still want to maintain Flame Shock and Lava Burst, however, start using Chain Lightning as a filler instead of Lightning Bolt. On three or more targets, technically, it's most efficient to just spam Chain Lightning. Don't be afraid to do a mix of both though, because often, even if there are three or more targets, there's still a priority mob that you want to be focusing down, so keeping Flame Shock and Lava Bursting that mob while spamming Chain Lightning as a filler is still pretty efficient for time, even if you're still losing a bit of DPS. In the rotation section, I also want to mention how to take advantage of some of your legendary powers. Since I run Deep Tremor, I get asked so often how I manage to keep my Earth Ellie alive. The simple answer is that you can't keep your Earth Ellie alive if the trash is hitting it. This means you need to use it more strategically, either on bosses or trash packs that don't hit very hard. Lots of packs are big, but mostly contain caster mobs and range mobs that won't melee for much. If you insist on using it into a big trash pack, try to give your tank solid time in his cooldowns to build threat before you send it in. Even if it only manages to stay alive for 15 or 20 seconds, damage is still damage. I also want to mention the Chains of Devastation Legendary. This is a build that not a lot of people have gotten to play around with, simply because I think it's going to require the full 4-piece tier set as well as a very high crit stat. The idea is that you're spamming Chain Lightning and Chain Heal as your primary DPS and healing abilities with the Legendary, and when you stack high crit, it's not only increasing the damage of your Vesper, but it's also reducing its cooldown more due to the 4-piece bonus. This means you'll be able to throw out Vesper Totem extremely often while weaving in tons of Chain Lightnings and still doing a decent amount of healing. In the follow-up advanced guide to this video, I'll be sure to test this build out and give you some feedback as to how it works in high keys. Right now though, let's get into cooldown use. Shaman has multiple pretty strong cooldowns, and being able to heal difficult trash packs and bosses involves throwing them out frequently. Healing Tide, Spirit Link, and Ascendance are all on a 3 minute cooldown. This means you could cycle them every single minute of the dungeon to help stay ahead and keep your team topped. Spirit Link is the most conditional because it requires people to be nearby to make use of it, so if you see an opportunity to get good value, you should generally just send it out. Healing Tide isn't super powerful, but gives you a little bit of added juice just to catch back up. Think of it like throwing a healing surge out to all your party members with just one button. 
Ascendance is your most powerful cooldown. It gives you a huge burst heal and added AoE healing over 15 seconds. Remember that the Ascendance burst has a 20 yard range, so before you use it, you may decide to shift your positioning slightly to try and take advantage of it. Let's say your tank is in trouble, you can kind of move towards him to try and make sure that most of the healing goes into him, or if you're in danger, you can kind of step back away from everyone to make sure that most of the healing goes into yourself. On top of powerful cooldowns, Shaman also has great utility that makes it incredible incredibly strong in pugs. Bloodlust is the most obvious one, however that's more of a group cooldown so you should be planning it out when to use it with your party. Wind Shear is also super strong given that Shaman is the only healer with an interrupt. As a healer you should be familiar with the most dangerous cast throughout the dungeon and using a focus target macro you can keep them locked down for the entire pull without having to rely on your party. Capacitor Totem and Earth Grab Totem are also really strong for mob control. You can stun mob casts and also just give your tank space to kite. Don't forget your more conditional utility as well. Purge can remove buffs from enemies with no cooldown, and Tremor Totem pulses fear removal to your party for 10 seconds. For example, the fear cast in the first boss of Miss is a really powerful example. X can be used as an emergency CC if you need to stop a patrol or just simply get a mob out of a fight. You also have many other pieces of your toolkit like Manatide Totem and Spirit Walker's Grace, the use of which should be pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to go into every single spell here as I wanted to keep this guide straightforward and easy to understand. Let me know if you have any questions or things you want me to discuss further. I'll also include links to some of the UI stuff that you see in the video if you're interested in that down in the description. Thanks for watching and happy keying.